live from St. Petersburg, Florida. Happy National Women's Day. This is your motivational, inspirational co-host, Kristen Marie Kidgel. And this is your first ever RLT Celebration of Women in Finance. So let's get started. So shout out to um, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. We all love you. Everybody knows that. Actually, let's maybe just drop like some eights out there for uh, Mr. Newsom himself. Tribe to Thrive is a play off of um, basically the top five people, you know, that you have in your life that they say the, the more you surround yourself with them, the more they influence you. So we're going to dive into that. Real quick, I am, um, like I said, Kristen Kidgel. I have been a chiropractor uh, probably about 23, 24 years now. Got a couple kids. One's turning 23. The other one's going to be 18 this year. And uh, it is nice and sunny in Florida here. I'm feeling sorry for uh, Tracy and all you guys out, out there where it's still cold. Um, I've been trading for about five years. So when I met Jeremy, I did not know it was kind of a new thing ish for him, but learned along the way, stayed really in touch with him, um, did not start with him. So those of you that talk about dropping, you know, thousands in a class that, you know, I did that. It was a three hour class. And so things have changed a lot. And so most of us have come across real life trading for the fact that Jeremy does want to enrich lives. And I am so thankful and grateful to be a part of this team. I can't say that enough. And obviously I feel like sometimes those words aren't enough, but anyways, what I learned um, in these last five, six years is your closest people that you keep around you are 100% influencing you. And that is really the focus of my topic because I think that one change, that one thing I really took and looked at in my life really started making a difference in um, the direction of my life. So let's jump in. So Jim Rohn, he was the one that basically was coined for it. I'm not sure if he was the original person, but he's the most known for it. So his, his actual quote is, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. But other things you will find out there. And I didn't always find someone that could actually be quoted for these, but show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are or who you will be. Um, and that's the next one is show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I'd have to say I agree with them, but in essence, when we have control of that, it can also, you have control of shaping, um, you know, where you're headed to. But if you dig deeper, the research is now saying that you are not the average of the five people. You're the average of everybody that you surround yourself with. So let's dive into that just a little bit deeper. This particular research was in 2018 and it was over three decades. So it looked at three different things. It looked at obesity, smoking, and happiness. And so in essence, it boiled down to this. If you look at the upper right here on number three, it says, if your friend is obese or smokes or drinks or put it, fill in whatever blank that you want there, you were 61% more likely to be doing the same thing. So that's just like your straight up closest friend right there. If you are a friend of a friend, you're still 29% more likely to be doing what that friend of a friend is doing. And if it's a friend of a friend of a friend, you're, you're still being influenced by that, which is, which is nuts. So in essence, I hope everybody is likely going to take out a sheet of paper and start writing down maybe the 10 people, 15 people in their lives that they spend time with on a regular basis and sit back and sleep on that for a little bit. The other thing is not friends anymore. It is the social media. And I'm so, I mean, following those two women, you know, we're kind of overlapping here, which is pretty amazing because we didn't do our presentations together at all. But these were just basically um, screenshots of who do you want to watch? Who are you looking at every time you open your social media? Cleaning your social media on a regular basis is huge. It was huge for me. And it's something I really try to, tell my kids is like, please just, you know, like my daughter, 
you know, okay, follow that chef. Okay, follow that makeup artist. Okay, don't follow the people in the bikinis all the time. Sorry, I had to throw that out there, but that's real. Um, as you well can imagine that whatever your social media feed is, it's really enhancing your, your brain. And especially nowadays where Facebook is really playing with their algorithms, even if your friend likes it, you're going to see that in your feed. So be really careful on uh, what you're liking, the friends that you're following, uh, really, really important. And you can really play with that behind the scenes and in your profiles and still, you can still be friends with them. You don't necessarily have to follow them. And then that's, that is definitely an option. You just have to go find it in your Facebook and things of that sort. So if you do any study with um, Dr. Joe Dispenza or anybody that studies what we're being surrounded with, those things have energies, those energies affect us. And, and then that basically levels and has a, an issue with our vibration and how we're resonating. And if you go and you study into that, you'll realize it's really, really important to make sure that you focus on what you're surrounding yourself with. I mean, we know that music affects us and what we're watching affects us. But again, we're talking about who we're surrounding ourselves, ourselves with and what we're looking at at social media. One of the biggest indicators is seeing how something makes you feel like right out of the gate. How does this person make you feel? How do I feel when I watch that show or read this book or listen to that book? Um, or what do I feel like when that flashes in front of me on my feed? If you get that yucky feeling, get rid of it, get rid of it. So switching it up, up a little bit, I found this really interesting that it's really, really important to make sure we do have critics and these people can still love us, but they can give it like constructive criticism. And so it says here that novices like positive feedback, but experts want constructive feedback to make progress. Um, I noticed that with, uh, with real life trading is we are out there asking people, well, what, what suggestions do you have? What do you think we can improve? And it's hard sometimes because it can come across negative and may not feel right, but it does help us improve. And it is important to ask that in your own company that you might be, that you might be running or your trading plan or having someone look at it, you know, who really honestly wants to share their trading plan? You know, that, that could be interesting. Oh, and this one, I've, I've seen this, I've had this happen. If you haven't had this happen, you haven't fully become like this echelon, which probably isn't the best way to put this, but unfortunately the naysayers come at you, the more successful you get. So I can't, I mean, Jeremy is so successful on so many things. I can't imagine what he has to put, push aside um, often. So shout outs to you because you are awesome. So keep in mind that differing opinions do help us grow. And then also keep in mind um, something that I came across. I thought this was really cool. And uh, so she was like, well, what kind of friend am I? Yeah, it's hard. Can we be all of these for every person we come across? Probably not, but we can kind of identify where somebody's needs are and say, this person needs a driver or this person needs help dreaming. So we have a dreamer who will help us um, figure out and work out our dreams. I could definitely see Svetlana soon to be Newsome, that person for sure. A driver um, will help dreams into reality and that would definitely be uh, Jeremy for sure. A motivator will inspire you every step of the way. You all know who that is in your life. You can just sit back and go, who motivates me? Supporters, they will always be there, thick and thin. My madre, if she's listening, that would definitely be her. You know, you guys know who these people are. And the opposing advocate will cut through the BS. Trust me, I definitely have some of those friends and they are the ones either from high school or from college. So they've known you likely the longest. They know your personality for sure. And you know what? They still love you, you know? Do not forget you are influencing everybody around you. We tend to forget that, right? But that's really important. So mental strength, isn't about acting tough, it's about being strong. And so this is Amy Morin who wrote that book, ironically, that has come up more than once now. And she has a podcast, by the way, you just probably would have to Google that, but the 13 things mentally strong people don't do. So let's go over those real quick since it's come up. They don't waste their time feeling sorry for themselves. So she, I really like that, what you were saying about giving yourself that time to scream in the pillow. <laughs> 
or whatever you need to do. I mean, we all have those friends that we can totally say, listen, can I just be human and vulnerable for, you know, 10 minutes? And they're like, yeah, sure, sure. Here's the shoulder. Um, do not give away your power. If you're doing that, call Sochi. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Don't shy away from change. I was in my 40s when I realized that I was change is really easy for me and so I thought everybody I thought it was easy for everybody and it's not and so if you have a thing for change reach out to me I, for some reason I can just be like oh yeah I can do that so let me know don't waste your um, your energy on things they can't control definitely some prayers a lot of people actually say this they have this tattooed on them I see this a lot where they're um, how do I put this where they wake up and they're just like, let me have control of the things that I can today, but let go of the things that I can't. Don't worry about pleasing everyone. It's not gonna happen. Trust me, I live in a world where everybody is expecting a lot from you know the care when they come in. And there are definitely people that come along that you just cannot please no matter how much you really try. They don't fear taking calculated risks. Isn't that interesting? That can be on so many levels. Um, but again, that's a risk to some, to me may not be a risk to you. So that is something you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself about. Don't dwell on the past. I can't believe how old I was when I finally heard this, but it, I heard this saying, and I'm sure most of you have heard this, but it was really shocked me and it kind of rocked my world where it's like, depression is looking back and anxiety is looking forward. And I don't know, that really resonated with me and that's all about being present. And so when we're present, those things tend to melt away. And then, you know, breathing obviously is helpful with that. Don't make the same mistakes over and over. Boy, we can, that can be in so many relationships. It can be in our trading plans. That can be in whether we're following our trading plans, all of those different things. They don't fear alone time. You know what? I have been here. I don't know if anybody else has a drop a three in the chat. If you were like, I've never been alone. And then if you're alone, do you have fear in being alone? So then you have to process what's going on in your life for sure. They don't feel the world owes them anything. That's kind of been a hot topic lately where people are, have all these expectations that things will be handed to them. Um, so obviously mentally strong people don't do that and they don't expect immediate results. Well, first of all, the word expect, you know, expectations can really ruin lots of things and immediate results. Yeah. We're kind of a quick fix society and trust me when I say in trading in chiropractic in friendships and relationships, everything expecting immediate results is, um, painful painful so many 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 of you if not all of you will not know who that is that is dr bj palmer he is the son of the the person that developed chiropractic and these types of sayings were all on the walls of um, the chiropractic school that i went to and it i love the saying it says we never know how far reaching something we think say or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow so think about that every time you say something or do something um, for yourself and for those around you, um, especially those of you that are really just trying to make a difference. Baby steps, baby steps. So my final thoughts, very much like I started this um, very quick talk here. I don't know, how am I doing on time? Not too horrible, I'm, I'm closing it up here. Reflect with pen and paper. I think Svetlana was saying that bringing pen to paper has some sort of releasing power. I don't really remember, but I've always felt like there's definitely something not to do it on electronics, but to do it really with pen and paper. And you could go through all of these, but the top, top 10, 5, 10, 15 people that you're hanging out with, definitely analyze that situation and maybe categorize them. Are they the dreamer? Are they the motivator? All those different things. Um, changes happen easier than you think and on their own. When we go, okay, I'm going to make that change with that relationship. Sometimes even just that thought of 
you drawing the mental line in the sand, something I think clicks in your personality and maybe your energy, and those things sometimes don't even need to be verbally addressed. It's very, very interesting. The love and the hurt, it's sometimes there. The communication and maybe even having a conversation isn't needed. And it's very, very interesting to, to step back and just breathe through a lot of this and not do everything just cold turkey, just be patient. One of the things I thought was interesting is when I was working and altering and really going, who do I want in my five, my top five? And I actually reached out to these people and, and told them, and it deepened the relationship. It strengthened the relationship. There was more give and take in the relationship and that just grew the give and take between the people. Um, and so it just expanded and strengthened me as an individual and likely them too. And sometimes they feel like, oh, they feel honored and it just really makes their relationship special. special. So make sure you, you tell them or ask them, you know, can you be in my top five? I, I think that's totally acceptable. So this is flexible, this top list that you make, people will come and go and you gotta be willing to be flexible. I mean, some people pass away and you know what, those core values, they still possibly could be in your top 10. So one of those things to think about. And ironically, I think it's really interesting. Everybody keeps saying this at the end of their talk, but remind yourself and everybody that you come in contact with is that you've got this.